The Epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Galatians, Chapter 1. Paul, an apostle not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have re preached unto you, let him be accursed. And we said before, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that we have re ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of God. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, to reveal his Son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred, not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went into Arabia, and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and it was unknown by face, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preached the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorified God in me. I want to deal with four verses in this chapter of Galatians. And he says Verse 6, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him, the him being Paul, that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. I'm assuming it was Paul that actually introduced them to that. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. In other words, there are false preachers that are come in among the Christians to sort of point them in different ways so that maybe they can take advantage of them, and maybe instead of having a, an unpaid ministry, maybe they should have a paid ministry. Uh, maybe instead of the minister supporting himself, you know, they should, should get some kind of payment. Um, maybe they shouldn't uh, worship on the Sabbath day, the Sunday. Maybe they should worship on some other day. Maybe they should do other things. And this, is, this is what Paul was having to deal with in all of his epistles. There are some that trouble you. So here's, here's what he says. And I agree with this. This is absolutely beautiful stuff here. Verse 8 and verse 9. Verse 8. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Absolutely, 100% agree with it. And verse 9. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you, you have received, let him be accursed. You know, if some guy shows up looking like a movie star and he can quote chapter and verse and every single word in the entire Old and New Testament and he can sing like an angel, let him be accursed, brethren, if he tries to teach you anything different than what we have taught you. The problem we have in the Christian world is that this is applied sort of like a blanket condemnation if one church or person disagrees with something another denomination says. But the truth is, 
that there aren't any denominations that actually have the gospel of Christ. There are lots of churches that talk about Christ, and there are lots of churches that encourage people to live Christ-like lives, but I have yet to run across a single denomination in 40 years that actually had the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. I'll give you two examples, and they're just two out of dozens and dozens and dozens of things that were taught or lived by the Savior and the Apostles that seem to be totally irrelevant to the vast majority of the Christian world and, and uh, don't see that they should be. Because the things that were important to the Savior and the things that were important to the Apostles should be important to us. If we do not live according to the teachings of the Savior and the teachings of the Apostles, are we living the gospel of Christ? And if we aren't following those ordinances uh, that were taught, if we aren't following the commandments that were taught, if we aren't following the practices that were taught and lived, do we have the right to say to other people, uh, you know, you're wrong? And it's kind of interesting. Because usually the people that apply this the most often are the people who know the least. I'll give you an idea. When the Savior uh, started his, mis his mission, uh, he went to the temple and he was very upset with what they were doing there to his father's house, he said. And he cleansed it. I'll ask you a question. I think a fairly simple question. If that building didn't matter, if it wasn't really his father's house, would it have mattered what happened there? Probably not. I don't think he'd have been too upset if it had just been another house, another building. If what went on there didn't matter, if it wasn't important that it be treated as a holy place and with great respect, the fact that it was being treated as a place to sell stuff and make money was a travesty to him. Now, just before he was crucified, a couple of days before he was crucified, he cleansed it again. And this time, as I recall, he called it my house. Now, as the Savior was crucified on a Friday night of the Passover, okay, if he was crucified during the Passover, we'll say the Friday night, on the, the crucified, he was crucified as, the, as symbolically the final sacrifice, the Lamb of God was killed at the Passover time. So he did, his death did away with, fulfilled all of the need for all sacrifices at that time. So if the temple had any value, it had value not because of sacrifices, but because of the ordinances that were supposed to happen there. Do you know, does your church know what those ordinances were, and do you have the right and the authority to practice those ordinances? If you don't know what they are, it's pretty hard to know, isn't it? Second, last one, running out of time. Paul says in Corinthians, Else why are they baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all? Why then are they baptized for the dead? This is not talking about taking dead people's bodies and putting them in water and taking them out. This is people who are baptized on behalf of people who have died before them, their ancestors, their parents and grandparents. If you don't understand that principle, how can you teach it and how can you live it? If it was important to them, shouldn't it be important to you? I think so. If you don't have it, are you living the gospel? 